The White House is flushed with fiscal ambitions. I want to get to taxes. I want to cut the hell out of taxes. We are going to massively lower taxes, reduce taxes on American business. This quarter, some of the biggest banks are starting to have their say. We need good regulations, not more or less. That when you reduce corporate taxes, wages go up, not down. What's good for the economy is economic growth and more job creation. Now, what does the ongoing Washington chatter mean for the Main Street economy? We need to cut back regulations that have prevented small and medium-sized businesses from being the engine of growth in this country. Rates, taxes, regulation, and uncertainty. Is growth on the horizon at your local bank? This morning, we got earnings from three of the biggest banks in America. As I mentioned, J.P. Morgan shining as usual. City surprisingly nice. Wells Fargo delivering what? Let's hope it's like the last bad quarter, although all three stocks, of course, ended up going lower because it's a tough day. The big national banks matter, and there was nothing particularly revelatory here. But let's not forget about the smaller regionals. They have a better pulse sometimes. We also heard from First Horizon. FHN. That's one of the larger regional banks in the Southeast, and this has seemed like a pretty decent quarter. While First Horizon's earnings were in line, the company missed on revenue and saw a little bit of decline in its mortgage business, but they explained it away. On the other hand, First Horizon's deposits were strong. The company's net interest margin increased ever so slightly, and nevertheless, uh, the stock, of course, ended up closing lower. Here's the thing. Even after this decline, we've got to remember First Horizon is still up close to 20% since the election. And the company just closed on its acquisition of Coastal Securities, a national leader in small business administration loans, which could potentially be a very lucrative area under the Trump White House. So let's take a closer look with Brian Jordan, the chairman and CEO of First Horizon National. Find out more about the quarter and where it's coming. Say, Mr. Jordan, welcome back to Mad Money. Good. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me back. All right, Brian, you're a straight shooter, and I think it's great that you had average loans up 9%, average deposits up 14%, but you did give on the comps call a little bit of mixed message because it looks like that you thought that maybe Washington would be doing a little better right now, and it might be causing people to pause a little bit. Right. Yeah, I, I did probably give a little bit of a mixed message. We have seen very good loan trends. Our customers are still very optimistic about the economy. And we, we see strong loan demand going into the second quarter and beyond. I think, though, some of the euphoria, particularly following the, the November elections when there was more confidence that we'd see structural reform and regulation and taxes and, and driving higher interest rates in a stronger economy may have subsided a bit. But, but all in all, we're seeing very, very good trends. The other thing I pointed out is there's a little bit of a disconnect between what's happening with consumer confidence, which is measured still at very, very high levels, and, and really small business confidence at high levels is not driving the same kind of spending or borrowing that you might expect given those confidence levels. At the same time, I mean, obviously, if you have loan growth up 9 and you got regional bank average loan growth 13, and then the efficiency, what you're doing with Bonefish, with the initiatives, we've always talked about that, is really terrific. So you're making a ton of money even if loan growth isn't exploding. Yeah, absolutely. We, this is an economy that, that we still believe in, in this environment is still growing at one and a half, two, maybe a little more percent, maybe a little bit less in the first, and we've seen some slow first quarters the last several years. But we're very, very comfortable operating in that environment. And we're, we're very comfortable in our ability to continue to grow loans, to add value to customers, help them identify and capitalize on opportunities that they have. So even if we don't get a significant surge in growth, we feel very confident in our ability to drive great profitability and at the same time improve the returns in our business, as you mentioned, our bonefish. Now, you did say the commercial real estate uh, that there's been a bit of a slowdown, and it's multifamily. Why is that? I, it was a pretty good area for a while. Yeah, multifamily is, is, is an area we've gotten concerned about in certain pockets of, of the country, and that's not universal. It depends on the market. There has been a lot of multifamily housing that has been built in, in various markets over the last several years. And we have not pulled back completely. We're still opportunistic, and we look for deals and markets where it doesn't appear to be getting oversaturated. But we're paying more attention to aspects of multifamily and certain aspects of the retail building phase as well. All right, now you're uh, still making acquisitions. The Coastal Securities, what does that bring for uh, your bank in, in terms of your overall portfolio? 
Yeah, that's a, we think a, an outstanding opportunity for us. We're excited about it. We closed it April the 3rd. It's all integrated. All the people are on board. We, we were able to keep, retain uh, the key leaders and, and the, the sales organization. It adds essentially a fifth product desk to our fixed income business. Uh, we do a lot of agencies, municipals, corporate finance. This adds the government guaranteed loan product, which is principally small business administration loans and USDA loans in a securitized format. And that provides a, a floating rate asset that buyers can, can capitalize or invest in. So we think it's a, a great add to our, our strong distribution network and the, and the product set that we already have available. And we think it'll have significant impact on our profitability over the remainder of this year and, and going forward. In fact, we think it adds something like $175,000 to $200,000 per day in average daily revenue. Well, that'd be terrific. One last question. I, I always figure that your bank is somewhat insulated from Washington, but in, in the end, if we don't get lower taxes and we don't get health care reform, that is going to hurt some of these small to medium-sized businesses that are in your area. So, I mean, what's your advice to President Trump? Well, I think the, the key thing for the economy and really boosting growth is lower taxes. And I think just pulling back the, the, the impact of regulation a little bit. I think health care helps as well, but I think we got progress on taxes and regulation and allow people to build plant, to make investments, uh, to, to have less uncertainty about how you might evaluate the regulations around environmental rules and, and banking and financial institutions. I think all that's good for the economy. And I think if the president and Congress can capitalize on that, I think this economy can pick up an awful lot of momentum. All right, that's terrific. Great, play to leave, great way to leave it. That's, uh, that's Brian Jordan. He's the chairman, president, and CEO of First Horizon. Thank you so much for coming on the show, sir. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Stock's up big. People taking some profits, but it's a good situation. We have money's back here for the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.